Hey everyone, Kieran here from Glitch Free Gaming. I'm here to talk about my top 5 games for 2017. Depending on the time that this video comes out, there'll be between 0 and 3 other videos up on the channel with uh, Paul's Game of the Year, Mike's Game of the Year, and our overall Game of the Year. But this is my top 5. You can also take a listen to our podcast, which uh, all across this week we should be having 4 episodes go up that will be our deliberations about Game of the Year. So yeah, go take a listen to that. Uh, but going straight into my list, number five, we have Gravity Rush 2. So Gravity Rush 2 is a weird one because it's a sequel to what was originally a PlayStation Vita launch game, it was fairly early on. And I loved that game uh, a ton on the Vita. First Gravity Rush was one of my favorite games of that year that it came out as well. Then they did the remake or remaster of it on the PS4 and oof, Oh, that's just the best way to play that game. I might even like that better than Gravity Rush 2 in a lot of ways, like, oh, it's just so good. But then they made a sequel, and initially I wasn't super into it. Like, the core things that I loved about Gravity Rush 2 were there. The characters are all, you know, silly and happy and great. The world is so bright and vibrant and colourful, but the new world in Gravity Rush 2 wasn't quite as... It didn't have the kind of psychedelic skies and stuff like that that made the first one so cool to just fly around in. Uh, but they they do stuff later on with that, so they bring it back, which is pretty good. But even then, like the new stuff they add in, like the cities that you can go through is, they expand in the verticality of what they can do in that world in a way that the first game didn't. There's a lot of just, hey, go up as high as you can and then fall down as low as you can, and hey, there's city in both places. There's city all the way up, there's city all the way down, there's city in the middle, and then there's side quests to do everywhere, and a lot of those side quests aren't actually great, which, you know, is a bit of a disappointment, but all the story stuff was great. And honestly, that's kind of, like, the most important part of it. Like, the story is so good, the characters are just really great, and it's kind of a shame, because they, they kind of set it up to be like, hey, we're not sure if we can make another one of these. The first one didn't do super well, and we don't know about the second one, and spoilers, it didn't do super well. But... Yeah, it's just one of those games that I still pick up every now and again just to fly around in. It's just fun to fly around in that world. They made the controls just so, so smooth. Uh, so yeah, that's my fifth favourite game of the year, Gravity Rush 2. So the fourth game on my list is Yakuza 0, which is another weird one because Kind of for the opposite reasons of Gravity Rush, where I didn't get into the Yakuza series. This is like the sixth game in the series, essentially. But it is a prequel to the other ones. And it's weird how easy they made it to get into this series with this game. It's like it is aimed directly at people like me who have been interested in it, but have not been able to, you know, fully embrace the series and sit and play it. There's so many just awesome things about it. It looks fantastic, the story is really really good with a bunch of like super interesting characters and then also there's just this loads of mini games and stuff throughout the whole world a bunch of side missions where you do really interesting things for interesting characters you build up your character with a bunch of leveling systems and you develop this really kind of in-depth combat system that makes it a step above most kind of average brawlers like there's a reason we don't see brawlers that often anymore. 3D or 2D, they kind of fell out of fashion for a while and it's because you can't do it well unless you have a really in-depth combat system that's also easy to get into. And Yakuza 0 straddles that line perfectly. And then it also has, you know, karaoke and dancing and a bunch of really cool finishing attacks and you can play baseball and you can do all this awesome stuff. And the story itself is so in-depth and engrossing. Like, you want to see it through to the end, in a way that a lot of game stories just don't manage to do. And it's one of those things where they, they've they been doing this for a while now, but they've managed to kind of nail cinematography in a way, and like direction in a way that most video games don't. I mean, a lot of the CG, or at least pre-rendered cutscenes, because they look very much like they could be an engine, they're just slightly above. But they just nail like the camera angles and the voice work and the music and they nail all of that coming together in a way that you know video games just don't. A simple thing from the depth of field uh, you know focusing in on a different character depending on the cutscene is just things that games struggle with. So yeah, X is zero. 
my number four game of the year. So yeah, at number 3, I have Mario Odyssey for the Nintendo Switch. The Switch had kind of a stellar first year, like I think it's hard to think of another game system that has come out and in the first year had, you know, such hard hitters as this, like to have what I would argue is one of the best 3D Mario games. It's not as good as the Mario Galaxy games, maybe not as good as Mario 64 was in its prime. Mario 64 kind of, some of the controls are a bit dated now, but it's better than a lot of other 3D Mario games, it's better than a lot of other Mario games, it's just fantastic. The stuff they do with the big wide open worlds that you can explore and they fill with a good mix of really easy moons, so you'll walk around and it'll just be, hey, here's a moon here, just hanging out, and you'll be like, oh that's kind of a bummer, that's not really, uh, you just kind of threw that there. But then a few seconds later you'll have like one of the hardest platforming challenges that you've ever played in a Mario game and you'll be like, okay, well this is actually just great. And then there's tons of that stuff and there's just tons of little things you don't expect. It keeps playing with the world in different ways. You'll walk around a corner and you'll be in a different area that has entirely new mechanics that they just use for five minutes and they're great. Or you'll, you know, capture a new enemy by throwing your hat at it and basically possessing its body like some weird lich and it, it'll have some new mechanic that just you've not used anywhere else in the game whether it's a caterpillar that extends out and pulls itself back in in a weird way or a bird that's you know beak can stick into the wall and let you climb up walls like there's just so many cool little things in this game that I'm not even going to spoil any more of them because it's just fun to find them out for yourself. So yeah, number three, Mario Odyssey. Then my number two favourite game of the year is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. So my number two and number one switched places a lot of times when we were kind of writing our lists for these and Zelda Breath of the Wild is one of those ones where when I sit and play it, I kind of is is my favorite game of the year and then afterwards it's like well actually there's other stuff that's a little bit better but god damn it's a good game I've done almost everything there is to do in Breath of the Wild like I've done almost all the side quests I've done almost all the shrines I've got like five or six more to go I think uh, I did I bought DLC and did all the DLC except for the hardest of the hard um, Master Sword missions that you get in the first DLC, but I'm working my way through those, I'm gonna get through them, but it's just the sense of wonder you get in that world, like, I don't play open world games to just explore anymore, I used to, when I was younger, I used to just really enjoy, you know, running around in Grand Theft Auto, and just driving around in Grand Theft Auto, and that kind of thing, and just exploring the world, exploring the space, but after a while of doing that, after playing a lot of games like that, you realise there's nothing to be gained from that. There's nothing interesting in that world except for the stuff that you're being pointed towards by the things on your map. And so Zelda Breath of the Wild does a really cool thing where it doesn't put things on your map until you've found them. So you go out and you explore to find the things that you want and the exploration, this could be really tedious, like other games have tried this and not done it well, but just the mechanics they give you for climbing and for, you know, running around and exploring stuff and getting horses and stuff, it's just so good and it's so fun, like the moment to moment gameplay is so much fun that it just doesn't get tedious at all, except when it rains, because goddamn the rain is the worst, yeah, and also, you know, Weapons that degrade over time, not great, but you know, you get used to it. It forces you to use different weapons until you get the Master Sword and then fuck it, who cares? So yeah, that's my number two game of the year. Second place to Zelda Breath of the Wild. And in number one, you've probably already guessed what it is if you've been following the podcast at all. Yes, that's right. Near Automata, or Automata, depending on, you know, whether you want to say it right or wrong. Is it automatic? Is it automaton? Who knows? Not me. But Near came out of nowhere for me. I didn't play the first Near. It's been on my kind of backlog for a long time. I've been wanting to play it, but I never did because even people who like Near often suggest that not playing Near 
because the gameplay is a bit rough and that's a shame but whatever the story seemed good i've watched a video that went through all of the you know the the story from the first game and i'll put a link to that video in this actually if i remember but you don't need to know that stuff to go into the second one like near automata goes off in its own way it's set so far after the first game it's its own thing and combining it with Platinum's stylish action game kind of combat stuff like this game is like if they took Bayonetta and turned it into an open world RPG like if you took a JRPG and put Bayonetta combat in it and then also gave it one of the best stories in video games it's oh it's so good don't get hung up on like there's a lot of stuff that goes around people being like oh you have to play through the game like three times to get the real ending that's kind of true but not really really you play through it twice and then the third one is an entirely new section like it's not it, it doesn't share stuff but even without that even if you only play through the first ending of Nier I think you would probably enjoy it it's just it does so many great things with combat with story with characters with music it has some fantastic music and it is just my favorite game of 2017. His wondrous grace has become a god. His grace is a god. So that's it for me guys. Uh, be sure to watch the other game of the year videos that we have going up or are already up. I'm not on sure which order these are going up in yet. I'm still editing all of these as I record this one because it's all a mess and I'm having fun with it. Uh, and yeah, as always, give feedback about you know video quality and stuff like that and I'll try and improve in the future. But yeah, listen to the podcasts, watch the videos, look at the website, let us know what your favourite games of the year were. See you guys.